And welcome everyone to our latest EP Top 25 reaction here. Power 36, Team of the Week, Player of the Week, Top 10 Games. And we take all of your questions here on the Bleacher Report app. I'm Andy Katz. Uh, all right. So we are now in the final week of the regular season um, of most conferences. Uh, already we've got some conference tournaments that are going to start up this week. I would argue the best of the first week conference tournaments is Arch Madness. Tremendous history in St. Louis. Indiana State goes in as the top seed, but do not dismiss Drake, Northern Iowa, uh, Southern Illinois, or Belmont. Any one of those teams could win on Sunday in St. Louis. That'll be on CBS. Uh, always a great event to sort of really jumpstart uh, Champ Week. Also, I would argue that uh, the WCC usually provides it. It bleeds into the beginning of Champ Week. The drama is a little bit different now that Gonzaga has won at St. Mary's. Uh, Gonzaga with two quad one road wins in the final couple weeks of the season at Kentucky, at St. Mary's. I think the Zags are comfortably in now. And so now you're going to have two out of the WCC without question. Gonzaga, St. Mary's. Could you get a third? That's the big question. Don't think that Santa Clara or San Francisco would probably the likely candidates could jump up and beat them uh, to win it. So I think we're going to be set. I don't see a bid stealer there, but there could be a bid stealer in the Valley because I think Indiana State should be in the field. And they're not in the rankings here. They were in my rankings, as you will see. But let's look at these rankings. Okay, so first off, Houston number one, UConn two, Purdue three, Tennessee four, Arizona five, Iowa State six, Carolina seven, Marquette eight, Duke nine, Creighton 10, Baylor 11, Illinois 12, Auburn 13, Kansas 14, Kentucky 15, 16, Alabama, 17, South Carolina, 18, Washington State. There are the Zags at 19, 20, BYU, 21 and 22, that's San Diego State and Utah State out of the Mountain West. There's St. Mary's with their first conference loss and South Florida. Boy, Abdul Rahim's unbelievable jo coaching job. Should be in contention for National Coach of the Year. Um, uh, the Bulls winning the American outright, and there's Dayton. All right, here's where I'm going to pick it apart before you see my power 36. Number one, top seven, no issue. Marquette, no Tyler Kolick for the rest of the regular season, so not against UConn, not against Xavier. He did not play last game. They lost. I think you have to drop Marquette just outside of the top 10, which is where I dropped them. Not in the seed line, in the rankings. I've already heard from... Barstool Marquette, if that's who it is, ripping me, call me an idiot, clown, whatever. This is not the seed. That'll be tomorrow. We're going to talk right here. Marquette's seed's not changing. They're going to be a two. But the ranking changes. They don't have the best player. They lost. Maybe they'll shock everyone and beat UConn without Tyler Kolek. We'll see. But they're not the same team right now for the rankings. Seeds, body of work the whole season. Cannot tell you how many times I have to hammer that home. That's number one. Number two, um, I would drop Kansas. Kansas lost at home to BYU and then at Baylor. Kevin McCullough came back for Baylor, didn't play BYU, but you got to drop Kansas. They're 9-7 and seven in the Big 12. They shouldn't be in the top 15. Again, not their seed, their ranking. Latter part of this, I think you have to drop Dayton. Okay. Dayton uh, should not be 25. Dayton is now in third place in the A-10, lost at Loyola Chicago. So, again, people are not paying attention. This is not seeding. This is the rankings. We have one more week where we're going to do this, and hopefully the AP voters will get it, okay? Pay attention. Seeding, rankings. There is a difference. Now let's go to my Power 36. 1 through 13, or 1 through 12, excuse me. As you see there, I agree pretty much at the beginning. You know, and you can, wherever you want to massage the, from Iowa State to Duke or Illinois or Creighton, I'm fine. You want to jumble that order, whatever. That's your top dozen teams at this moment. They're playing the best basketball. That's the best 12 in the country right now. You want to put them in any order, that's fine. Although I dispute. Top three, I think, is pretty set. Those are the top three teams right now, and they are the three favorites going into March Madness. 13 through 24, 
uh, here's where you're going to see some difference. Okay, so you see I have Marquette just outside. They're not one of the top 10 teams right now. They don't have Tyler Kolick. They may be in the Big East tournament or NCAAs, assuming and hopefully he comes back. Very similar there where you th- see there BYU. Uh, you know, Auburn came back after losing a, at home. Uh, excuse me, losing at Tennessee. Good road, uh, good win after that. So I've got them in the top 25. I'm high on Florida. No one else seems to be. So I got the Gators and Todd Golden's group in the top 25. 25 through 36. There's Kansas. Okay. I know I dropped them, as you can see, 10 spots. Uh, Nebraska, great win on Sunday over Rutgers. Um, There's Richmond. Richmond is leading the A-10. There's a little Chicago right there who just knocked off Dayton. So I have two A-10 teams not named Dayton in the rankings, not in the bracket. There's a difference. Boise State, Iowa. Iowa is surging, one at Northwestern. Um, they're right on the cusp of potentially getting into the field. Indiana State, as you can see there, I have them in my power 36. Uh, leading the Valley is the top seed, winning it outright. Unbelievable job by Josh Schertz. Northwestern, um, tough week. Went on the road and won at Maryland. Monster road win without Ryan Langborg. Then they had to play Iowa. They still scored 80 points without Langborg. Still don't have, you know, Barry's gone for the season. And then Matt Nicholson injured his foot. And they still somehow scored 80 points. So, you know, I think they're right there. They're as gritty a group as any in the country. Nevada surging in the Mountain West. Villanova, great road win at Providence. They're in right now. Now, here's what's against interesting. Okay, Syracuse won four in a row. I don't have them in the field, but they're playing, I think, better than any other ACC teams not named Duke and Carolina. Syracuse right now is playing the third best in the ACC. Doesn't mean they're in the field. This is right now, okay? I'm high on the orange for now. We'll see if they can continue that momentum. And Princeton. Princeton tied with Yale, but surging in the Ivy. Um, You know, look, uh, the Ivy doesn't get two, but if Princeton loses in the Ivy League tournament, going to be a shame because they can win games again in this tournament i'm not saying yale and cornell cannot and by the way big shout out to mike martin and kima ferrari uh of brown brown has been on the doorstep for years like i think literally three or four years where they've lost the tiebreaker they got the sweep of harvard great atmosphere in providence friday night and they finally qualified as the fourth team in the ivy league playoff Uh, i've been against you know that's one tournament I think should have expanded because it's literally three days versus two. And uh, it's only eight teams. And really, I've been saying this because I think it's unfair to Brown um, or anyone else that would have been in this position where they've lost a tiebreaker multiple years to be that fourth team in. So now they're in. Uh, sweep Harvard. Ferrari had 39, I think it was, in the game against Dartmouth on Saturday. That was the clincher. So shout out to Mike Martin and his Brown Bears finally getting in to that Ivy League tournament. Um, All right. So my national team of the week, if I'm not mistaken, we're going team first, is Tennessee. Uh, They're the top team in the SEC now. What a week they had. Swept through the state of Alabama. Beat Auburn at home, and they win at Alabama. Um, Great week. Dalton Connect had um, 39 in that win over Auburn. I mean, Dalton Connect to me. It's Zach ED1, Connect 2, on the first-team All-American list. Phenomenal effort from Connect. Northern Colorado transfer, big sky to the SEC. He's the SEC Player of the Year, and he's a first-team All-American, and he's going to be a lottery pick. You know who's number three on my first-team All-American list? I'm giving away the goods here a month from now when we do this, but it's obvious. Three spots are locked to me, locked. Zach ED. Dalton Connect, and our national March Madness Player of the Week, R.J. Davis. R.J. Davis, 42 points in the win over Miami. Um, By the way, in that, he had 42.6 rebounds, four steals, and just two turnovers in that 75-71 over the Canes, who had a disastrous season after making the Final Four last year. Then he had 14, seven boards, five assists, and only one turnover in that nine-point win over NC State. Um, he's the ACC player of the year, and he locked to be a first-team All-American. 
All right, so now here are my top 10 games to watch for the week of March 4th. Obviously, number one is North Carolina Duke. So let's see what happens on Monday night if Duke beats State and Carolina beats Notre Dame this week. Then this game on Saturday, I mean, it's always mean something, but it could mean even more because Duke could get a share of the ACC regular season title. Uh, and then Carolina, if they win, they win it outright and get the sweep of Duke. And they're still in contention for one seed, Carolina. Purdue at Illinois on Tuesday. Um, again, Illinois, if they beat Purdue, then puts themselves in a position over the weekend to get a share of the Big Ten title. Uh, Purdue won a share and had the confetti and the trophy and all that. But Purdue still needs to win one more game to win it outright. And they've got this game against Illinois, and then they got Sunday against Wisconsin. Kentucky at Tennessee Saturday. I mean, just great rivalry. So much talent on the floor. Uh, we'll see how Tennessee does this week because before that, They've got out South Carolina. So what a way to first Tennessee to finish the season. Last four games there, home Auburn, at Alabama, uh, at Car South Carolina, home Kentucky. Wow. Then I got Illinois at Iowa on Sunday. Um, so we'll see how much that means for Illinois. For Iowa, they got a week off. And if Iowa beats Illinois, I think they're in. Uh, I think it's win and in. Win and in. If they lose, they need a lot of work to do in the Big Ten Tournament. But if they beat Illinois, I think it's win and in. UConn at Marquette now takes on even more meaning because it was announced earlier on Monday. Tyler Kulik will not play. UConn's already clinched the Big East outright, but Marquette's still trying to hold its seating uh, in the Big East and beyond. Alabama at Florida. I'm high on Florida. Others may not have them as a lock. This would have certainly helped if they can knock off the tide. UConn at Providence. Providence is now out after losing at home to Villanova. But if they somehow find a way to beat UConn on Saturday, I think they could be back in in Dayton. Clemson at Wake Forest. Disastrous week for Wake Forest. They beat Duke, and they followed it up with losses to Notre Dame and Virginia Tech. In Virginia Tech game, they were just crushing the Hokies. So they need this game. Clemson gets upset by Notre Dame. They're fine. They're in. This is, this is about a seeding thing for them, the ACNCA. Wake Forest needs this game. And then New Mexico at Utah State Saturday. The Lobos are one of the last teams in now because of that home loss to Air Force. They lost at Boise. They have uh, this game only matters if New Mexico beats Fresno at home on Wednesday, which they should. They have to win that game. Then this game could be this is a win and in. You beat Utah State in Logan. Lobos are in. Lose work needs to be done in the Mountain West Conference without question. Um, before we get to your questions, my stock up right now is South Florida. Congrats to the Bulls winning it outright. BYU, what a week. Winning at Kansas and then um, following up, um, you know, winning two games this week. Just a great week for the Cougars. Um, St. John's, a little late surge, so it's good for them. Um, and actually, where did I put BYU? I'm just going back to BYU. I had BYU, let's see here. Yeah, I'm at 20, excuse me. So, stock up, South Florida, BYU, St. John's, Ohio State, uh, beating Michigan. And now they're suddenly an interesting team. If they sweep this week uh, and beat Rutgers, then they go into the Big Ten tournament where what happens if they win two or three games? Are they suddenly in play? Because they have that win over Alabama. And they've already beaten Purdue. And they, you know, won at Michigan State. So keep an eye on Ohio State. And then Brown. I gave the shout out to Brown because they finally qualified for the Ivy League tournament. Great job by Mike Martin getting them in. Stock down, Virginia. I saw Virginia uh, courtside in Cameron against Duke, and this team just can't score. Um, they need to beat Georgia Tech. Have to beat Georgia Tech. They're hanging on by a thread right now. Wake Forest, as I said, they got to beat Clemson. Kansas. Um, struggling right now without McCuller playing, then he back, and then they're just no bench. Um, they need to get their act together in terms of trying to make a run here in the Big 12 tournament and beyond. I mean, they're fine, obviously, in seeding and all that for the most part. Providence, the loss to Villanova stings. They need to make that up with a shocker by beating UConn. And then Mississippi State's lost a couple in a row, and I think they're just hanging on by a thread. They're either in or out, depending upon, you know, uh, who you see in, in terms of different brackets you're going to have them in or out. And so, you know, that's what's interesting about their case because it's such a tough league. Um, Briggs Cosby, Utah State, 
getting some love finally. Yes. Uh, but now can they win the Mountain West Conference outright? That's the big question. Mitch Dog, what's the highest seed UK, UK can get? Can they get to the two line? Um, yeah. What if they win at Tennessee and then win the SEC tournament? Of course they can. Jack Scott, can Indiana get in a large bid or do they have to win the Big Ten? Um, they got to win the Big Ten tournament. Uh, the question, of course, is if they win at Minnesota, oh, the, the, win at Minnesota, Michigan State, they will be 5-8 and eight in Q1. True. So I guess I would say if they get to the final, depending on what happens around the country. Rank App State, eight people. Come on, says Big Philly. Um, look, they got to win their tournament, but they're very good. How is Dayton still ranked? I disagree. I mean, I agree with you. I don't know. I disagree with the eight people. Kansas is a wreck. Hopefully they get it together before conference tourney time. Yes, they need to. Duke shouldn't be in the top 10, Big Bird. I disagree. I saw them with my own eyes, courtside. When they're clicking, they are really good, and they were clicking on Saturday against Virginia. Big week for them. NC State, Road, home, Carolina. Connor, I never would have bounced Florida out of the top 25. I agree with you, Andy. Thank you. Uh, thoughts on Ohio State? I just gave them to you. Is Nebraska a tournament team in your eyes? Yes. Um, no question to me. Obviously, beating Michigan would certainly help their case because then they got another road win against the worst team in the Big Ten. Is St. John still in the mix for March Madness, asked Jensen? Yes. Got to keep winning, though. See what happens in New York. And by the way, those games are going to be home games for the Red Storm. That's what's been determined about the Big East tournament. FAU had some bad losses, but shouldn't they still be ranked? No. No. Are they in the poll, in the in the field? Barely. Should they be ranked? No. Can Texas make the tournament? Benny, yes, I think they will. Uh, what does Carolina need to do to number one seed? Keep winning. And if Arizona loses one, I think it's either them, it's either Carolina or Tennessee for the one. Can Memphis still make the tournament? They are right on the edge to get back into the field. So we will see, but they... It would behoove Memphis to get to that American final by beating either South Florida or Florida Atlantic. Highest seed the Zags, the Zags can get. Um, the highest seed is probably a seven. They don't want to be in that eight, nine. They're probably, we'll do it tonight, but, you know, are they a 10 right now? Probably. Could Drake get in a large bid if they don't win the MV, uh, Valley Conference Tournament? I'd say the answer, Josh, is yes, if they lose to Indiana State in the final, depending upon what else happens around the country. If they lose in that final in Indiana State, they're going to sweat. They definitely will sweat. But uh, they will be in the mix without question. Um, let's see here. Uh, take a couple more. Um, you know, Clemson is a six seed. Uh, that's probably the range they're going to be in. Um, yes, I could, you can make the argument of Carolina being higher, but I think Tennessee's playing a little bit better right now. I think St. Mary's is a lock to get in. Yes. Um, uh, L Jordan nine just wants a shout out. There you go. There's your shout out. Uh, games of Madison Square are home games to the Huskies, not the Johnnies. Well, that's technically not the way it is, but you're right. It will be like home game every time UConn plays at Madison Square Garden. What are the chances K State? They got to win a ton of games. I, I just they're they're down the line here of teams to get in. Um, you know, Kansas fan sees fourteen perfect. I say you got to be lower. I have them at twenty five right now. Not the same team. And uh, so look, a Brown two two three three. You're going back to the Tennessee Carolina game in November for the ranking. No, it's not the way it works. You can't go back then to judge a team now in the rankings or even the seeds. Sorry. Uh, I got Purdue getting Glendale because they're going to be in Indy and Detroit. So there you go. Where's Wisconsin sitting right now? And they're on that 6-7 line. We'll have to look at it. Um, I think Iowa State will make a run. No question. I agree Duke's starting to click at the right time. Um. Illinois, they could make the Final Four. Cincinnati's out right now. Uh, Kentucky ceiling is win the whole thing. No, no question. No question. All right. Went for about 22 minutes. So here's our housekeeping in the short term. Tuesday, 1 o'clock Eastern time, right here, breaking down our latest bracket. All four regions will take your questions. Then next Monday, Tuesday, we've got the last installment of this, AP Top 25 Reaction. And then Tuesday, our last bracket of Champ Week. 
And then Sunday night, Selection Sunday, we will break down the bracket on that Sunday night. So before the tournament starts, for sure, those are – we're going to have these streams leading into the first games, but I wanted to make sure everyone knew that follows us regularly. Tuesday, 1 o'clock Eastern, Monday, 1 o'clock Eastern, next Tuesday, 1 o'clock Eastern, and then Selection Sunday uh, at 7 o'clock Eastern. So follows down, make an appointment engage right here appreciate it uh and uh as always you can follow me at the andy cats on twitter slash x and then at the real andy cats on instagram march madness mbb ncw.com and our bleacher report app right here as always thanks for engaging and participating here every monday